equal rights in Germany. Do women in Germany have the same rights? Do they have equal rights and equal status? If Germany wants to compare itself once again and looks to Iceland, then it looks bad again. But once again, Germany would compare itself with the arguably leading country in equal rights for men and women, Iceland. Ah, as a disclaimer beforehand, people who consider themselves very religious could be irritated by this video since I'm addressing scientific findings here which contradict many religious writings. However, if you look at religious scriptures as historical writings by people of their peers, the context explains itself. Why should women have the same rights as men in first place? Let's put it this way. In the vast majority of human history, men and women were equal. If you dare to take an archaeological look back that is not clouded by male pathos or religious creed, you will see that, for example, around 9000 years ago, 10 women were buried in 26 South American tombs of hunters. So if we go back to the times of hunters gatherers, women were also hunters, had to master the same task and dangers as men. From the time Homo sapiens moved out of Africa until sedentarization, men and women were equal. Women had a child about every six years, which is logical. If you live nomadically, a woman can hardly carry two children on her travels so the child must be big enough to walk by itself. The wheel was discovered for transportation only 5,500 years ago and the horse was domesticated only about 4,000 years ago, so before that what could not walk by itself had to be carried. After people became sedentary, life became much more difficult. Probably this point of time is mentioned later even in the Bible when Adam and Eve were chased out of the paradise. People did not go after the fruits and game, but had to find and grow locally what they needed to live. Since a lot of cultivation had to be taken care of locally, there was no need to travel and women could get pregnant more often. But this also meant that they could no longer travel and tasks away from the farm fell increasingly to the man. So that all this was well justified, it was also written down in various religious writings. Women should stay at home, the man has a say and much more. Of course this could be well justified by the guild of the woman. If you want to have a closer look at this, I recommend this video of the University of Maastricht about a lecture of Professor Karel van Schaik, The Truth About Eve, the Invention of Gender Inequality. So this was often the religious that pushed women into a subordinate role. Since most rulers made use of religions, this was the case in many regions and for a long time. In ancient Greece or Rome only men were allowed to vote, in the United States after the War of Independence men were allowed to vote, even in Switzerland women's rights to vote was not introduced until 1971. Often men owned the property and women even had to be given a dowry. The women had to change families and was thus without relatives and friends in a foreign country, all alone without protection. There are also areas in Africa and Arabia where men are allowed to have several wives. Well known are the harems for the former sultans. This is also called polygyny. In the old Egypt, the work of the women was respected. In some areas of the Himalaya there is polyandry with which the women may have several men and with the Iroki the women are in authority and already in the ancient Greek one feared for the Amazons steeped in legend. Even today there are women in the armies of most countries and in some countries there are women units from the former Agoje to the Women Air Force Service Pilots, the Amazon Guard in Libya or the YPS of the Kurds in the fight against ISIS in Syria. So it is not always and everywhere the case that women are valued less 
but often they are not equally entitled and still married off or are not allowed to leave the house alone. So how is it in Germany? Before the law, women and men are equal. Well, almost. There is one criminal offense that applies only to men. Section 183 of the German Criminal Code criminalizes the exposure of a man and any accompanying harassment as exhibitionism. This paragraph does not apply to women. A naked woman falls at most under Section 183 of the German Criminal Code Excitement of Public Nuisance. But otherwise? Article 3 of the Basic Law clarifies. All persons shall be equal before the law. Men and women shall have equal rights. The state shall promote the actual implementation of equal rights for women and men and take steps to eliminate disadvantages that now exist. No person shall be favored or disfavored because of sex, parentage, race, language, homeland and origin, faith or religious or political opinions. No person shall be disfavored because of disability. Thus, since 1949, men and women have actually had equal rights. Women had already obtained the right to vote in 1917 and were able to use it for the first time in 1919, both actively and passively. There were also already elected female politicians in the Weimar Republic. Four women also worked in the Parliamentary Council, which drafted the basic law and ensured that women were taken into account in the new constitution. But in fact, all was far from equal. While men were addressed as Herr, women were only addressed as Frau if they were married. Unmarried women were addressed as Fräulein, similar to English Mr, Mrs and Miss. It was not until 1955 that it was enacted that Frau was not a synonym for wife, but any woman was allowed to be addressed as Frau, Mrs. Until 1958 the husband was allowed to get permission to terminate his wife's employment contract. She also had to get her husband's permission to get a driver's license. With the Equal Rights Act, community of gains also become a legal property regime in marriage, meaning that all gains during the marriage belong to both spouses in equal shares. In 1968 the Maternity Protection Act came into force, which better protected the expectant mother and child. In 1977 there was a reform of the marriage and family law. The wife was now allowed to take a job without the husband's consent. The image of the woman as a housewife was also abandoned. In the case of a divorce, the fold of a possibility cheating partner no longer applied, but the principle of breakdown, according to which both are to blame for the failure of the marriage. Also, the pension equalization was introduced where the partner who takes over the children and therefore cannot work as much must be supported by the other divorced partner. The woman is also allowed to keep her last name during the marriage. Because it was mainly men who were avoiding paying child support, the Advanced Child Support Act passed in 1980, whereby the state pays for child support and then recovers the money from the parent who owes it. There were subsequently many more laws to improve the lives of women and children. For example, a separate Ministry of Family Affairs was established. It was not until 1996 that marital rape was criminalized. It is unbelievable that this was not punished for so long. The payment of men and women in the profession is equal according to the law and collective agreement, but this still has a disadvantageous effect on women even though they actually get the same money for the same work, women usually take a longer time off when children are born, often only work part-time afterwards and then often do not have the experience for an upcoming promotion. Thus a gender pay gap in Germany is about 18%. By law, both men and women can take parental leave and in fact more and more fathers are taking advantage 
of the opportunity to spend a few months or even years intensively raising the children. Women in Germany can actually achieve anything. Until recently we had a female chancellor and the EU Commission currently also has a female president. There are female judges at the highest German court, a female two-star general in the Bundeswehr, female chief physicians and various ministries are led by women. However, only 22% of the board members of DAX companies are women and most of them are responsible for human resources. So even if on paper and before the law men and women are equal and the perception of this is sharpening, women still do not have the same opportunities everywhere. As mentioned here in the video, there's a current discussion about whether there should be a difference between men's chests and women's chests or whether women should be allowed to go topless in the swimming pool just as much as men. For some people naked bodies are sexually connotated and so some people also see the female breast as something sexual regardless of how the situation is at the moment. For many years women have been allowed to sunbars topless along the Isar River in Munich. So if you are not used to seeing a woman in skimpy clothes or even topless, you should think about whether staying in Germany is a good idea or check exactly when and where you're going to stay. A woman thus has exactly the same right as a man. A woman in Germany may therefore decide for herself whether or when she leaves the house what she wears and whether or what she wants to study, learn or work, whether and whom she wants to marry and whether and how many children she wants to have, all this she decides herself, possibly together with a partner. The partner, maybe also her husband, has no right to decide about the woman. It is a partnership on eye level. It is typical for girls in Germany to have their first boyfriend at the age of 12 to 15 with whom they may also kiss or hold hands. Girls in Germany have sex for the first time from the age of 16 or rather 17. Going to marriage, virgin, is the exception rather than the rule in Germany. That is all right here and covered by law and even many Catholics don't take it too seriously with premarital sex anymore. As long as adults or young people of roughly the same age have consensual sex, it is generally not an issue in Germany. This is one of the reasons why sex education is given in school so that everyone involved knows how to protect themselves against diseases and unwanted pregnancy. If anyone here thinks this is not appropriate for women or girls, they should think about why it should be appropriate for boys or men. But not all women are quite the same. Well, according to the law they are, but in a study by the London School of Economics and the Universities of Pittsburgh and Pennsylvania, which conducted an experiment at several train stations in Germany, a woman's wheel leads to her being helped less often than women who walked around unveiled. For many Germans, the wheel, like the hijab or shador, seems to be a sign of oppression although nuns wear a very similar head covering. A niqab or burqa does not go at all for Germans. In some German states there are even more or less strict laws prohibiting schoolgirls from wearing a niqab or burqa in class. But regardless of whether a veil is worn or not, this is usually not a reason not to participate in physical education classes. Whether a headscarf is a fashion accessory or a part of practice of one's face is a matter of dispute before the Federal Constitutional Court, which values the free practice of religion as a fundamental human right. This may only be restricted if another high good would be impaired as a result. There is no doubt that personal freedom takes precedence over the freedom to practice religion which is why young people over the age of 14 can decide for themselves whether or not they want to take part in religious instruction or religious ceremonies, regardless of what their parents want. 
murders by male relatives of women and girls, often with a migration background and their partners, still happen far too often in Germany. Germans usually have no understanding for this. Whether and with whom a woman wants to live together is her free decision. While many women from abroad feel safe in Germany, a study by the Merseburg University of Applied Science in 2020 revealed that 9 out of 10 women in Germany have already experienced one or another form of sexual harassment from whistling behind them to catcalling. Dick pics are frequently sent on social media. 51% of respondents have experienced attempted sexual violence and 30% have experienced coercion to perform sexual acts. Most of this violence took place in the respondent's own living environment and the violence almost always came from men. In fact, this puts Germany in line with the global average. Also, there are even countries where up to 70% of women have already experienced sexualized violence. All of these are criminal offenses and will be prosecuted if they become known. Fortunately, women are reporting cases of sexual violence and sexual harassment more frequently in recent years. The Me Too movement has played a large part in this. In Germany, no means no. If the woman verbally or visibly rejects an approach because she says so, turns away, walks away or pushes the other person away, this is clear in front of the courts. Any further approach is punishable. This is not quite as strict as in some other European countries where only yes means yes. So their explicit consent is required beforehand. As said before, this applies just as in a relationship or a marriage. If the woman does not want, that is a no and everything else is forbidden. For the protection of women from violent husbands, there are women's shelter in which the women, if necessary with the children, can be brought in security. In the description besides the other sources, there is also a web page for the women's shelters as well as the telephone numbers of the help hotline for women who are victims of violence and a telephone number for mothers in trouble. Here help is offered in 18 languages. On paper and in large parts of society, women have equal rights. Unfortunately, there are still a few backward men who make life difficult for women. The majority of German men see women as equal partners. Not for nothing, it is normal for the German man to sit down on the toilet to pee, to pick up the children from school or kindergarten, to go with them to the playground or even to take parental leave. I hope it became clear that equality, after a short period of a few thousand years, will become the state of affairs again, which is both logical, ethical and human and altruistic. How is it with you? Are women and men equal with you? Are women allowed to go when and where they want and dress as they like? Can women get any education and hold any job? So if you are thinking of coming to Germany, you should be aware that women can live an emancipated and self-determined life here. If you don't like it, you should either consider changing your attitude or think again if coming to Germany is really the right thing to do. Even if nothing is up to date in Germany, here we are progressive and will not turn back at this point. Thank you for your attention and see you next time.